All right, YouTube, I'm working on this today. It's a generator rack. Um, it's going to go off the back of my camper in a receiver. Um, I've already built the base for it. Um, we're going south, so I'm going to try to figure out something to put over the top of this to keep it from getting stolen. I'm going to make an aluminum cover for it. Uh, it'll be out of three pieces. It'll be dry riveted together. Um, kind of show you the design that I've come up with. So here's the design on paper. So all those circles are going to be bead rolled um, on my bead roller. We have our two side pieces. This will be our top. It'll be folded here and here and there'll be lips on all sides so I can rivet it and it'll sit down on my generator rack. Um, so I'm going to get to laying it out on the aluminum. All right. So here's my sheet of aluminum. It's like 16 gauge. Um, I started laying out my lines here for That'll be the lip that folds, it'll fold up this way. This will be the side come to here. That'll fold down to be the side of the box. This will be the top. And then the other side, and then my lip. You guys are making this to where you want it to sit on something. Make sure you don't forget to put some kind of lip for it to sit on. Um, so that'll be the top piece and I'll get this cut out. I'm gonna use my electric shears. Um, it's a little tough to cut this being 16 gauge with my electric shears, but it does do it. So once I get it cut out, I'll show you. Um, we'll come back and I'll fold this up. I don't have a break and I don't have tipping dies for my bead roller. So we're going to have to figure out some way to bend all these bins over the bench. So I'll get back to you with that. Cutting one of the side pieces, I got the top all bent up. So I kind of want to show you guys a bit of a pain to cut this. You guys are using these, make sure you cut past the line and get this curl that sticks up. So when you cut in the other direction, you have a spot to start. So you get a little bit of waste when you cut past there, but it's easier to get the shears in there to cut the other direction. This is what I wanted to show you guys. This is my electric shears. Um, I'm just cutting down my line here. I'm going to cut this to length and then I'll start bending it up. Um, like I said, this is these are rated for this, but it does take a little bit of work to push this through here. Um, Safety note when you guys are cutting, make sure your cord does not get down in here. Runs across this sharp edge, you could cut right through your cord. So just be aware of that when you're cutting. Uh, make sure you keep your cord up where it won't get cut. All right, so we're back to this. So I gotta start making these bins. I got one, two, three, four bins. Two one direction, two the other. I, like I said before, I don't have tipping dies for my bead roll and I do not have a metal break, so we are going to do it this way. I got this giant, it's like a seven by four and a two by four. I'm going to clamp over this and I'm going to start folding that edge down to make my lip to sit on my generator rack. And then we'll just move down to the next mark right there. Fold it the opposite direction. Same here and same there. So we'll see how this goes. All right. So here's my setup. Uh, got that six by four or seven by four, I believe it is. Stuck my aluminum in there, put this 2x4 over the top with the clamps. And I just took my dead blow hammer and slowly worked from one side to the other. Slowly bending it down until I got it flat. And then I beat it against the 2 by or 4x7, sorry, on the bottom side there. Um, I did notice it kind of slipped a little bit because um, it's not a metal break. There's not a whole lot holding it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is switch over to this piece of steel on the top. So I can get a little better clamp on the top so it doesn't move quite so bad on the next bin. Yeah, first bin, three more. All right, we've got our side cut out here, our marks, one inch. Those are actually one inch uh, flaps or sides you want to call on them. So what we got going on here right on the corner, you can see this one's got to fold up. This one's got to fold down. So this corner has got to come out. There's multiple different ways to do this. Uh, if I had a welder, um, I would probably fold these 
two together on the top side of the uh, side and weld the upright seam. And then on the lower side, this would fold down. Um, I would maybe 45 this or cut one side and then fold this up so that I could attach it to this side. Um, but for this project, since I don't really have a metal break to make that happen real well, um, I'm just gonna cut those corners out, fold them. Like I said, this thing isn't designed, isn't gonna be designed to be watertight, uh, mainly to keep my generator from getting stolen um, and keep it out of the sun uh, more than anything. Um, and most of the seams where I'm gonna dry rivet them together, I will probably put silicone under them. Um, just to try to keep some of the water out. But like I said, I'm not expecting this thing to be watertight because the bottom of my rack here, as you can see underneath the generator, is graded. So any road debris or water coming up from the back of the trailer is gonna get all over the generator, dust, all sorts of stuff. It's mainly to keep that thing enclosed and locked to the back of my camper, um, kind of conceal it a little bit. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. Like I said, it's not, Probably not the best way, but it's the way I can do it right now. So that's what we're doing. All right, we're back to this. I'm gonna bead roll these sides. Um, some of you haven't used bead roll. Essentially, it puts a, a divot in the metal to give the thin metal some rigidity so it's not so floppy. Like right now, you can see it's like this. As soon as I bead roll this, put bead rolls in it, it should stiffen it up. Um, the one thing that I did realize I messed up on, I folded my sides here up and it won't fit inside my bead roll. This is actually only the second time I've ever used this. Uh, first time I did it on my uh, tough truck. So I'm new to this. Um, a lot of things out there, if you guys watch it, you'll see that they want you to, I think they call it Flenish Hammer, this to stretch the metal. So when you push this, it doesn't distort your side. Um, I don't have one of them, uh, and I'm not super concerned about it with what I'm building here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and bead roll this. Um, just in the future, if you guys are going to do this, make sure your sides will fit in between your bead roll here. So we'll go ahead and do this. The wrong side here. But pretty much I'm gonna put an X across the middle of this, um, both directions. And I've just drawn a line, I'm just following the line right down the center. It's a half inch uh, bead roll, half inch radius, I guess is what they call it. So I went two and a half turns down, I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go back the other direction another half turn, so I'm about three. I just want a little more defined line in it. Like I said, I've only done this a couple times, so I'm still learning how this thing works. It's definitely there's some guys online that are very, very good at this and probably have some better advice than I do with it. Um, like I said, I'm still learning how this thing works. So as you can see, 
put a nice bead in there. I don't know if you can see it this direction, but it puts a bead in there and now your panel becomes stiffer. So I've done it that direction, but you can see also it distorts the metal. And that's why a lot of guys, um, what I see online is, they'll hit this with a, I think it's called a planking hammer, and they'll stretch that metal, soften it before they bead roll it. Um, I don't have that option, so this is what I'm gonna do. It'll kinda, even if it does bow out a little bit, it'll get the side of my box maybe some water drainage when the water comes down it. So that's one. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, so I've drilled my first hole. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys is I've center punched these so the drill bit lines up. I want these holes to be pretty uniform from side to side, so I've stacked my two pieces on top of each other and drilled through both pieces at the same time. Um, all right, so I know that the threads on my little knobs, they're quarter 20, but I've looked at my stereo chart here. Um, quarter 20, it's right here. So if you look at it, if anyone's ever not used a stereo chart, it'll tell you what size to drill your hole so you can run your tap in. So it's a 201. Um, I put a 201 drill in here. We'll drill it, we'll tap these, um, and then we'll drill the holes in the box to line up with these. tap these holes so I'm gonna use a little lube on my tap here. I'll stick these in here and we'll tap them. I'm just kind of eyeballing this so a lot of people use a tap guide. They'll clamp to it and have the bushing it'll keep your tap holes pretty straight. Um, main thing is don't break the tap off. It feels tight, back it up a little bit. Um, this tap has been well used. I've had it for quite a while, so hopefully I don't break it off in here. And repeat this prog process on all four holes, and then transfer them to the box and drill them through the box. Main thing when you're tapping is just make sure you you get the tap straight in both directions, so looking this way and looking this way, so your threaded hole or your tap goes through your hole straight. You start to bind, that's when you start getting in trouble. You can tell this tap's a little dull, it's kind of sticky. Alright, so I put my bracket in place with my tap holes. Um, I'm going to use this. It's a transfer punch. Uh, essentially, this is the size of the hole. You put it in there, and it'll get you dead center on your where you want the hole transfer to. So we'll just put it in here. One divot there. One divot there. So now when I pull this off, I don't know if you guys can see the marks, but you can see two divots right there. So it's going to tell me exactly where to drill. So I'll drill these out all the way through my bracket down here, then my uh, knobs will go through the bottom side into my bracket here that's already been drilled and tapped. All right, we're back to this. Um, after I built the box, I kind of decided that I wanted to be able to use all the electrical stuff on the front of my generator while it was still bolted up. Uh, kind of an afterthought. Uh, first it was just to conceal it, but I figure if I have a door on the side of it that I can just open, I can just leave it in there all the time locked in my camper. So um, what I've done, obviously I cut a hole, um, cut all my bead rolls off and stuff. Um, and then I did this. Uh, I got a set of step dies for my bead roll and it creates that step so you can slide a panel behind it. So that will rivet right onto there, and then you'll be able to have one on each side. Then you'll be able to drop a panel in from the top, and it'll slide all the way down to the base of the generator rack. 
Um, then you can just pull it right back out. I'm gonna dry rivet this onto here. I gotta straighten up this edge and around the corner over. Um, but you, the panel will have a little lip on it at the top here coming out. So it'll be like a handle you can pull out and I'll put some kind of lock in the middle so that the panel can't be slid out unless I unlock it. So kind of what we're working at. Uh, once I get this sides riveted on here, I'll uh, record a little more and show you how I use the dry rivets. Um, I didn't do that earlier when I actually built this box, so I'll get that done. So since you have dry rivets just like that on these side pieces. Um, so I'm using these, I think they're called dry rivets or dry rivets. Um, you can see the ends of them are like a button. Then you have your anvil that goes inside. I'm using an air chisel is what I'm using. Um, I think they make actual ones that are lower RPM for these exact rivets. But as you can see, they fit down in there. It actually cups that rivet, so when you drive it in, it'll smash down the flat, the round side of the, sorry, the stud part of the rivet and pinch the two pieces of metal together. Um, as you can see, you've kind of put a couple in here. I'll try to get a video of me actually doing it. Um, the one thing I will tell you, um, since I am using this, I do have a regulator on this because I tried it without, with higher air pressure, I guess you could say and it just would smash the head of the rivet. Um, it would slip off and divot it, so it just didn't look real good. Um, so I went down on my air pressure with this regulator. I uh, just got a dial right, right here, sorry. You can turn it up and down. Um, when I pull the trigger, it's about 20 PSI. Um, seems to be doing pretty good on the rivets, uh, not flattening them out, it's leaving that kind of round head on them that you can see. Um, if any of you guys are wondering, um, this is what I'm using. They're eight by five sixteenths. Uh, 1100 F aluminum solid rivets, round headed. Um, I have 8 by 5 16 and I also got 8 by 7 16 uh, a couple different sizes, and they make these in all sorts of different sizes. Um, I just happened to buy these ones from, they're called Henderson Rivets. I got them, I think, on Amazon uh, quite a few years ago when I built my tough truck dash and my visor. I put them in just for looks. Um, so if you're wondering, that's where. I got Henderson rivets. Um, you get a whole bag of them, I guess, and I got several different sizes here. So um, those are the ones I'm using right now, or eighth by five sixteenths for these sides. Um, I think I use the longer ones on the corners, just hoping to get a little more, I guess, staying power since my rivets are fairly far spaced apart. They're about four inches. I got them spaced up the sides here. Um, and being the corner, I just wanted to make sure I had a little more back on the rivet. Um, one other thing when you're doing this, when you drill your holes, make sure you drill them, deburr them, because you get the metal kind of, let me turn you here a little bit, you get the metal shavings in between here, then your panel kind of warps. It does suck down a little bit, but you'll see air gaps behind this panel where you rivet it together. Um, so I'll, I'll show you this. I got this side on. Um, and what I'm going for, once I get the other side on, I'll be able to put a panel up like this, and it'll slide in from the top down. Then I'll fold a 90 this way so I have a handle to pull this up. That's what I'm kind of going for. We'll see how it turns out. Um, all right, so I was telling you about deburring your holes. After I drilled it, you can see the burrs that pop up on all these, I hope. And if you leave those in there and try to dry rivet, it, your panel will start to get kind of some funny waves in it and just doesn't look as good. So I always come back through, whether I sand these, run a chamfer tool through them, uh, file across them some way and try to knock this down so that the panel sits a little flatter on there. You can see it's kind of rocking now. Um, once you get rid of those, it'll sit flat when you're in your dry rivets in. The dry rivets will actually grab a lot better, have a little bit better bite. Yeah, I got my panel that I'm gonna Bead roll the one I cut out. You can see I laid out my lines here. Um, I'm going to drop some half inch round just like we had before. Get at it. You can see I put my, my table on. Um, had it on. I put it on there for some reason. <laughs> but it's on there now, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so pretty much. What you do here is you just kind of run down until you got pressure on your dies. 
then you turn it down how many ever turns you want or how deep your panel is. Um, I did three on the other one, so that's what I'm going to try to do this time. Two. Return. Two more minutes. So the one thing I have noticed with this, once you pick a line, just go with it. Don't do sharp turns because then you'll start seeing it really bad in your bead roll. Um, if you get off your line, just slowly, gradually go back into it. It'll be less obvious to the eye when you're looking at it. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of guys out there that'll re-roll stuff. I have a tough time with it um, when I roll it and I try to go back over it, it's really hard to, for me to stay on the same line. Um, then you start seeing your die marks on your bottom roll or your top roll, um, depending on which way you roll on the panel. Um, and they're kind of tough to sand out when they're right on the edge. Uh, this is a pretty defiant bead. I mean, I'm three turns in, it's a pretty big bead, so you can really see that bottom die, because the bottom die, it's not radius like top die, it's actual square corners, so it actually pushes that round one into that square corner, and you can really see the line right there. So, just some heads up, it's the first time you've ever done this. Like I said, I'm no expert, I've only done it a couple times, so I'm still learning myself. This way, just so I got the majority of the panel out here. Really, what I'm trying to do is I line up the center of my my shaft on my bead roller with the mark that I made. It's two and a half inches down, and then the center of the radius on my line going this way. Um, that way, I got kind of same start points on each one of my bead rolls. And then I have the same stop point on each one of them at this end too, and I'm right down the center. And where I do my stop, dead center with my, my shaft on my bead roller here, so all the lines are in the same spot. Okay, got my panel, got a bead roll. It did bow a little bit this way. So I put the, the bead side down on my bench and just kind of pushed it a little bit to get that bow back out. Because when I bead rolled it this way, it wanted to go like that. And that's kind of the part of not being able to stretch this metal here. It just bows the panel really bad. Um, but you just push it on the bench and it takes a little bit of that oil canning out. Um, bow panel, now that I got those, it just drops in here. Slide right down. I'm going to take this edge, fold it over so I got a handle to grab to pull it out. But then a tool that conceals my generator uh, looks pretty good. I got to sand it obviously uh, to match the rest of it. And then once I sand it, I'll wipe everything down, clean it up, um, some rubbing alcohol, something like that. I think we're going to be pretty close to done. I might figure out some way to make a lock here. Um, but it's like I said, it's a pretty tight fit in there uh, just with this step die. I mean, it's going to have a little bit of a rattle, but on the back of my camp rat, I don't think I'll hear it. So, um, should work pretty good once the generator's in there. Pull it up, plug in your camper, kick the generator on, totally concealed. Nobody can get at it. It'll stay out of the weather. Uh, this will probably been more than a 90, so it sheds some water. Um, other than that, we're getting pretty close. Air compressor, sorry. Um, so I got my panel built. Bead roller, I still have to sand it, um, but I got my lip folded over here. So now all I gotta do is pull that up. There's my generator. Plug my camper in, leave this panel out while I'm running it, and we'll go down the road, slide it back in there, push it all the way down, and it's good to go. Alright, here we go. Finished product. Um, I did finally get 
I got my locks, but you can see I kind of had to notch that a little bit because <laughs> I couldn't find any locks in town that were long enough to go around inch and a half. Um, unless they were like four inches and I didn't want it hanging down that far. So I just notched it. Um, so now you got your uh, two wing nuts holding these two pieces together. This locks it down. Same thing on the other side. You got a lock on each side so that thing ain't going anywhere. You pull it up, get to your generator, plug it in, push the panel. The panel doesn't really slide super great yet. It's kind of got to work its way in. Uh, it's just kind of getting caught side to side. Um, it does slide in there if, you, if I'm using two hands. Uh, like I said, it's just metal to metal sliding. So that's a little frustrating. I'm going to make probably one more thing up here when this is all the way down to hold that in there as we're going down the road so the wind doesn't pull it out of there. Um, other than that, it's pretty much done. It's pretty solid on there. I did make, <clears throat> I make these things right here. I take a, it's essentially a two inch square U-bolt. And then I put a plate with a stop on the back right here. So when you tighten these nuts down, you can see it bowed the plate a little bit, but it holds it tight against the receiver. So you don't get any wobble. So as you can see, hopefully, I can do this while holding the phone. There's no very little wobble in it because the receiver has a little bit of jiggle to it. So that kind of eliminated it. Um, the only other thing I did want to point out, um, you can see I put one extra bead right here because you can see it oil canned a little bit on me. So I tried to get some of that out by putting an extra, essentially I took my step roll and step rolled it right here. It's still got a little bit but it's not enough to really bother me. So, but that's what she is. She's above my heater vents, so it should stay pretty good. It's all locked, secured. Nobody can steal it off there, so.